the older sister stayed there in spite of everything. And it got to the point where Priscilla um, being um, approached by the pastor and then finding herself in this dealings, I don't want to call it a relationship with him, um, really uh, impacted her mentally, um, spiritually, and uh, physically, where she was getting physically sick, but she just continued to do it. And then the confrontation that happened um, with the wife, and it got to the point, even before that happened, it was that she had just kind of went into herself. And she says she stayed in her room a lot. Oh, wow. Uh, so anyway, it says the Shin family and the Derricks did not participate in the docuseries. Yeah, they said that. Um, though Miranda has stated on social media that she is not in a cult. Then it says B-Dash describes 7M as a secular for profit company run by people who have faith in God, okay? In his own statement, it is their job to manage, control our bookings or schedules. That is not a cult activity, and it is called doing business. So there are a lot of people that, like I said, that are still there um, and whatnot. They also show for these particular sisters, Priscilla and Melanie Lee, that um, uh, the one that got out first, which was the youngest, Melanie said that once she got out and she had her daughter, she got married, she had her daughter, she always made it, um, made sure that wherever they stayed, they picked a place where there would be a spare room because she was always hoping and looking forward to her sister getting out, finally seeing the light or having the courage enough to leave this particular church and she wanted her to be with her um, and her family. And then they showed um, an issue in which, a situation in which um, Melanie's daughter, I forgot uh, how old her daughter is, but she's still very young, um, had a birthday and she invited her sister uh, Priscilla. And her sister Priscilla did come, but she came late. And she sat down with her and she was talking to her sister. And her sister, they had a very volatile, volatile moment in which the sister was basically bringing it to her attention again that they had just came out of a what? <laughs> a cult, okay, that she was also a part of, okay, at one point, but she stayed, and that it really, and then the trauma that they had um, sustained from their broken family, their biological family, um, she's not normal. She basically said that, I'm not normal, and I'm struggling. And I hear what you're saying, and I love you, and I love my niece, but I'm having some issues, and it's not getting any better for me. Um, she spoke of wanting to end her life. So I was just like, oh, my God. So then they showed her um, asking for space, but letting it be known that she loved her sister. And I think what she did is that she went back to Korea, and she found her biological father. And she basically said, told him how she felt. And usually in those situations, um, the other person wants to kind of smooth it over, okay? Because they don't, they have their own, I, I don't know, but I think that the father has his own trauma and he doesn't know necessarily how to be a father. So he tried to smooth it over and she wasn't having it. <laughs> she wasn't having it she wasn't disrespectful but she was very blunt with him and uh, I think that that's how she has to be you're respectful because he's your father in spite of his behavior but you're not going to sugarcoat it either okay that he basically abandoned them and then their mother okay had her issues as well Okay, no one's perfect, but it really, he didn't even know the father, how could he know how long she'd been in this particular church um, with the allegations of it being a cult. He says, I thought you were in there for five years. She says, no, I was there for 23 years. And he even looked shocked. He was like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Um, I don't know if their father reconnected with her other sister or they didn't show that in the docu-series. It just showed her reconnecting with their biological father in Korea. So, yeah, I really, I don't know, got into everyone's story, but especially this these sets of sisters. I don't have sisters. I have two brothers, but um, by her being the eldest and I'm the eldest, I, maybe that was something. I don't know, but I just really felt sorry for her, and she was just saying how you know, there's a certain level of free will, but um, that she'd been in this church since her 20s um, and that she'd really at one point wanted to have children, but due to whatever was going on with this church and this mind, uh, this control or whatever cultish kind of situation, um, she basically missed her opportunity and she was really, really crying. And I was like, oh, my God, this is this is not good. Um, but I do hope that everyone in question basically heals. Um, I might not be my place to speak on this, but um, outside of this docuseries, I remember working with someone who was a social worker um, at this center that I worked at. And um, the lady was very reserved, very nice lady. Um, and at one point, her daughter worked there for, for a time, and then her son, and I had the opportunity to meet her husband. He didn't work there, um, and at some point, because she was very quiet, I'm very quiet, I keep to myself, pretty reserved, uh, she actually started to open up, and when she opened up, she really opened up, and what she told me was that her daughter had um, somehow got in a cult, and they were trying to get her out. So you go from a person being extremely, extremely, extremely quiet. I mean, even more quiet than me. And then when she does start talking to you, she say, I'm trying to get my daughter out of this cult. And it's in another state. And of course, when she told other people, you know, everybody was a buzzing with it um, about her daughter. And then I wanted to know, but I didn't want to overstep my bounds, especially when you're um, in a work setting, a professional setting. You don't want to be like getting people face and ask, you know, she told me about it, but you still, at least for me, I was like, okay, when she didn't like volunteer, every time I would see her, I'm thinking that's pretty heavy. And I remember waiting till we were alone and I asked her and I said, if you don't mind me asking, um, I let some time go by, but not too much. Um, have you talk to your daughter and she's like yeah we did we got her out but I don't know I want to say somebody else might have been uh, also kind of suckered into this particular it was a certifiable cult it wasn't just a religion she made that very abundantly clear um, and I think her daughter had actually had her first grandchild in this cult um i don't know who was it another member i'd hate to say if it was the uh, pastor or the leader i don't know so let me not say but this is very very real and it happens more often than people talk about like i say this lady she didn't really talk hardly at all um very, very, like I said, she seemed even more quieter than myself. And when she started to, and it seemed like after she told me that, then I would actually see her, witnessed her laughing. She never would laugh or anything. So these things, even though it's not her involved, like she's part of this cult, her daughter, and it affects how you actually interact in your day-to-day -day activity. It takes a toll where she couldn't even, she said, I haven't heard from her. I haven't seen her. These things are so real and they're so serious where people are actually controlling other people. It's, it's, it's just mind boggling. <laughs> Just listening to Teachable Moments with April podcast, I truly hope you enjoyed this episode.